so here's some bonus content for you guys my tuner just sent me a tune the first tune that incorporates VTEC along with that my tuner wants me to do a wide open throttle pull all the way to 8,000 RPMs okay wide open throttle pull from first gear here we go all the way to 8 a lot faster than I thought it would <laughs> oh good engine good engine good car Woo! I'm gonna do the last oil change to the RSX well the last break-in oil change so uh, we did the first break-in period where we ran the car for about 15 20 minutes and I, we cut that oil filter open and uh, I will have shown that or I'll be showing it say here. This is after the break-in miles for the for the RSX. So this is the first oil filter that we ran on the K24. Um, and as you can see, I tried to cut it open with like an with like an actual can opener. Didn't work out. Um, and this is the second filter that we ran. I haven't messed with it any. But I ordered this guy. This is a Proform oil filter cutter. This really trick thing here. Um, so um, I thought these were made in America. It says it's made in Taiwan. Uh, the construction is pretty good. Uh, so can't complain too much. I'm just going to oil up threads here just to keep this thing moving nice and easy for years and years to come. Don't want to put undue stress on it. We're just going to put it in just like so. And we're going to tighten this down until it gets to the point where it's making contact. And I assume we just spin the filter. Might need to get like a like a, a wrench or something on the filter itself. And I think we got through. Yes. <laughs> Very cool very nice tool it'd be it'd be it would have been a lot more elegant if i would have been able to put this in a vise or something so we just want to get in here and be able to see the filter material so there's definitely bits and pieces in here nothing totally out of the ordinary I'm not seeing a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I mean, and some of it may just be loose filter material itself, but as far as I can tell, this looks fairly normal. I mean, there's a good bit of junk in here, but this is what you expect to see on a brand new fresh engine, which is why they tell you to change the oil pretty quickly after the fact. So yeah, look, there's even a piece of hair in there, probably likely for me. So a lot of this is just junk. It's not that big of a deal. There's a lot more stuff at the bottom though. I wanna look at that. Um, yeah, I mean, just nothing out of the ordinary. I don't have too much concern about it at this point. I'm actually kind of glad I waited until this point to look at this because if I would have seen this beforehand I probably would have freaked out a little bit more. Let's crack open this filter. This is the filter. We put 70 miles on that car with this filter. So hopefully we see less material and each filter we go through we'll see less and less material. That is the goal. That worked out a lot better than last time. Okay. Yes. All right, this oil looks a lot dirtier, like it's less see-through, I should say. But, it's clean. 
That is perfect. That's exactly what I want to see. I mean, there, there's a couple little flakes. And again, that could just be loose filter material. That could be from where we cut it. I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's room for error here with cutting a filter open. You gotta understand that there's gonna be some debris. And even in a normal oil change, like you probably will see some debris, but like that, this example right here, virtually spotless. And like, this is the bottom, the bottom of the filter, folks. Yeah, there's a little bit of debris right there. But like this, like I said, that one was just starting at the engine and warming up. This was after 70 miles of driving. And now we've got over 450 miles of driving on the car. Let's check the filter itself, looking in between the veins here. Eh, pretty clean, pretty clean. I'm gonna check each and every vein of this one starting here at this. A Little bit of debris there, nothing harming or damaging to the engine itself. A Little bit of something there, nothing big. Like we're talking like, it's probably like some silicone that I overshot or something. Good. Our engine is, uh, I'm going to call it, our engine's good to go. So uh, we're good for uh, the wide open pools that we've already been doing <laughs> for tuning purposes. So I'd say with, with that filter being super nasty and having a bunch of stuff in it from the startup and this one having 70 miles on it, I'd say that we have successfully built the engine and broke it in and tuned it. And so yeah, we are t we're good to boost at this point once we are able to do that. So very cool. I hope you found this educational and informative. We, uh, I went a little overkill on this last break-in period. So I put uh, 700 miles on this engine already, over 700 miles. Uh, so uh, I went a little bit past the, uh, the, the barrier there. Um, most people only drive it for about 500 miles, but uh, we're finally going to drain the last seven quarts of the BR, of the driven BR30 break-in oil. Uh, so that conventional oil is all gonna come out and we're gonna be swapping to our newest channel sponsor, Valvoline. I'm just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I wish. Um, but no, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna swap to a, um, a Valvoline full synthetic um, and I don't have to run high mileage anymore because we no longer have a high mileage engine. So how cool is that? All right, so this is the oil that we're gonna go with. Uh, I know the bottles look different, but I promise they're exactly the same. This is the old style bottle, this is the new style. So we're gonna run 5W30 weight oil and we're gonna run advanced full synthetic. Um, and this one says it's got 40% more wear protection versus industry standards and 25% better deposit protection. So that's great. So we got two five quart jugs here. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that I'm gonna have to start buying five quart jugs, more, to, well, two five quart jugs. I used to just buy one, dump it in, and that, that was good. The RSX took pretty much right at five quarts. Uh, so, but hey, race car. So uh, let's, uh, let's get the car jacked up and drop all that oil out. Splitter life. Now, before we uh, fully drop everything, I want to check the oil one last time, just so that way we've got some peace of mind knowing that, you know, we didn't lose any and it, yeah, that's dead, that's dead nuts right in the middle. You guys probably can't see that. It's super, super clean, but it's, it's perfect. And I like the position that Moroso has the oil drain plug too. It's much better than where Honda had it. There's definitely a good bit more color to, to this oil than, than pretty much every other oil change before this, but that's what I want to see. You know, I kind of wanted to see a little bit of breakdown in this, so that means it's done its job and cleaned out any pollutants and uh, any debris or anything like that. And just for reference, that, if you guys can even see that, that's how much debris is on the magnetic drain plug. So very, very little very very pleased with this with all the results that we've gotten this went well like i don't really know how else to say it i thought i really believe that everything went super duper well getting all that conventional out of there which is super exciting for me i can't wait to get synthetic put back in this bad boy
barely enough room right there. That's my secret spot. And not too much spillage. Looks pretty good, but we I am gonna cut this guy open. Thank you, Valvoline. Oof. Oof. That is easy pour. <laughs> Did that with one hand. Good job, Valvoline. Great job. And it's still going my goodness that's a lot of wool okay so i'm just gonna wait for this to finish and then we'll throw the uh the drain plug back in now we just play the waiting game we got a serious case of the drips up front so we're just gonna plug it off need to order some more of these uh crush washers i don't know if they're like kind of a universal deal or if moroso has like a specific size in mind but surely we can find some more now these are definitely stronger than factory, but you don't have to go super tight. That's about all I do. And then we can cap this off and take this oil to recycling. I normally use a funnel because, uh, yeah, I'm still gonna use a funnel. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this whole five quarts in there because she'll drink it. We need to get it down to the three mark for it to be correct. Try right there. Close, very close, and that should be good. We'll test it again after I we run it a little bit. But this is going to live in the trunk of the RSX for now, until we become a little bit more confident. I'll still probably keep it back here. But this can just stay here. Make sure that's nice and tight so it doesn't go anywhere. You gotta fit. I gotta put the interior back in this thing. Ooh. We can take these out now because I just kept these in here as spares, but now they're no longer required. So we'll save this for the next for the next engine break-in. Jacking up right at the front of the subframe. Coming down. <laughs> and splitter problems. <laughs> All right, let's check the dipstick. Pull it out, give it a wipe, back in. It's a little finicky to get this back in with the Morosa oil pan, but a little bit of patience, you can make it happen. And it's super clean and hard to tell, but uh, we're right at the top dot there, so that's perfect. After we run the car, I'll check it again, but I think we're good to put the oil cap in. Beautiful. Look, it even came with a brand new bolt and nut for the uh, battery tie down. How cool is that? Been needing one of these. I don't know where my original one is. I don't even know if the car had one to begin with, but uh, gonna be putting this on and it's all legit Honda hardware. So since we got a brand new battery that actually fits in the car, I'm, I'm pretty excited to, to have this stuff. Plus I think if we're gonna be racing, it, I legally have to have this. Next thing we're going to be tackling is this breather filter. Um, I've got this Mr. Gasket one on here and it, it's fine, but uh, the way I had to mount it is that it's it's too long. These are a lot more low profile, so I'm just going to be throwing this K-tuned one on there. So hopefully it, it works better for me. I'm going to put that just like that. But now it should clear the AC line because that was my main concern is that the other one was actually hitting the AC line and I want to try and retain that until further notice should be able to slide this on just like that and now this no longer hits anything it's a little bit kind of out there but it's not touching and that's that's really what I wanted to to achieve so we're gonna tighten all these clamps down and we should be good on that front
Okay, so we tackled everything I wanted to tackle underneath the hood for today. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be doing it inside because it's pretty toasty today. Um, and this would be better, I think, if we just went ahead and did this inside. So we need to pull off this side panel right here. Remember when we did the lights in this uh, link in the video? Um, but remember when we did this because all these bulbs or most of them were shot? Same thing has happened over here, and it's been like this for a long time, but these are a lot less important, but I'm kind of wanting to not necessarily restore the car, but I'm wanting to get it back to everything in working condition. You know what I mean? So this is pretty simple. Um, just use one of these plastic trim removal tools. I like to come in here from the bottom, and it usually pops out pretty easily. Usually. Yep, see, there we go. So I'm just going to unplug everything, and we're going to take this whole thing inside. The mirror controls are held in by screws, but these are held in by little tabs. So you just push these in like that and they pop right out. So we're just gonna do one at a time. So the bulb is right here and uh, I've got it, let's see, I've got these labeled. So this is the one and only sunroof bulb. There's the part number for it right there. So we just need a small flathead screwdriver to twist that guy out and replace it. And it does have a little red little red sheathing on it to make it red, I believe. We'll see if this one has it as well, or if that's just like a protector thing. Finally got it. And yes, it is red. So we're going to throw the new bulb in. There we go. Next, we're going to do the cruise control. So the upper cruise control bulb goes to this little slot right here, and it is this green one. And this is the part number for that. There's our new bulb, so we're gonna get it installed. And this is the number for the lower bulb. So now that we got all the new bulbs installed, let's take it out back to the car and check everything before we button everything back up. So it's probably pretty difficult to see, but I assure you the cruise control light is working and you can kind of see it there. Um, and now for the top, there we go. Perfect. It's working exactly like it should, which is awesome. So now I can, not only can I see it, I can see when it's activated, which is cool. Which, I mean, I, I know when it is activated, it comes up on the dash here, but I mean, it's nice to have that working. All right, moment of truth time. If I can get this to kind of sit up in any kind of fashion. Will it work? And you can definitely see a light hint of kind of pink right there. Let's see if I can kind of close this off. And yes, it is definitely, definitely working. So now I'm gonna plug everything back in and we'll be able to test for sure if everything's working. There we go. And yeah, you can't really see it right now, but I'll come back out here later when it's dark so that way you guys can actually see it. You can really see, yeah, you can see that actually. Yeah, so now everything is working as it should, which I'm, I'm really stoked about. That's awesome. This light definitely works. And these don't these don't light up they're just yeah they're just there but yeah i'm super stoked about that yay all right moving on to the next thing so continuing our trends with the upgrades for the rsx i want to make it more of a driver's car which it already kind of is but an upgrade that i've been wanting to do for a very long time it will help with 
you know, as a, as a technology upgrade, it's going to help with that. It's also going to help shave some weight and it's going to help make the car a little bit more versatile and fun to drive. And that is a brand new radio. So this is a Pioneer DMH-160BT. I'm assuming the BT means Bluetooth. And that is the technology that I'm excited about because I have had the same Pioneer radio in my black RSX and my old silver RSX that you guys probably didn't see a whole lot of since 2013. <laughs> so uh, almost a decade. So it's definitely time for an upgrade. This radio weighs less, uh, mainly because it does not have a disc drive. So you can't play CDs or DVDs. Um, it can play DVDs, but you have to hook it up uh, through USB only. But one of the big things that I'm excited about is that this thing, like I said, has Bluetooth, but it also has CarPlay. Um, and I also got a brand new uh, dash kit. So uh, my old dash kit is just old. Uh, and I've heard that these Metra kits are kind of like the go-to. So we're going to see how well this thing works out. So we're going to get everything set up, and then we're going to head out to the car and just kind of throw everything in. All right. That's pretty much it. So we're just gonna double check real fast. So we've got our ground, or really long black wire for some reason. I don't know why they made it so long, but we're grounded, so that's mm -hmm. fine. I guess they assumed that maybe you could just ground this to the car. It would do the exact same thing, but either way, it doesn't matter. So we got our ground going, got our 12 volt. We've got our blue remote wire that's got the butt connector on it. We got our five volt constant. We've got, ooh, I missed a piece of heat shrink. Hang on. Hold what you got. All right, we got our orange illumination wire. So we've got our solid purple right rear. We've got our purple with a black right rear, right rear negative. Uh, we got our green, which is left rear. And then we got our green with a black stripe, which is left rear negative. We've got our gray, which is right front. And then we got our gray with a black stripe, which is right front negative. And then we've got our white which is left front and then white with the black stripe left front negative so the only wires here that aren't connected they're all good all good to go all pretty equal length which is pretty good because i'm going to wrap th this whole bundle up uh, with electrical tape so the only wires that are left that are not connected to anything uh technically we got this you know remote wire area where we're going to splice in our remote wire um and really the only reason i'm doing that is because there's already remote wire in the RSX. So if I ever want to put in like a spare amp or replace the factory one, or if I ever want to go with like a, like a small subwoofer setup just to make the car sound a little bit better, like, like I do like a 10 inch sub in a very small box or something like that. Cause I still want, you know, race car status. Uh, but I do want it to be a nice daily driver as well. So yeah. Um, so just in case that's always, that's going to be there. So we don't have to do anything. We don't have to fiddle with the rear of the radio ever again. Then we've got this wire, which is our reverse gear signal input. I'm probably just going to splice on a wire and just run that out. So that way I don't have to, uh, once this is installed, I don't have to mess with that again. We're good to go. We could actually technically just hook this up and it would work the way it is, but we got a lot more work to do. So I'm going to get this wrapped up and then we're going to move this circus out to the RSX. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. It don't get much better than that. That's probably the best wiring harness, the cleanest wiring harness I have ever made. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it, not a whole lot, but that's kind of how I like it. Uh, so like I said earlier, if we've got a remote wire connection, we can just connect right there, no problem. We've got our uh, reverse uh, switch wire that is going to actuate our camera going off and on, which is awesome. And then we've got our you know, movie, you know, um, lie wire basically. So good. We got access to all this and so we can run it and this should just be plug and play. Um, normally I'd say that you probably shouldn't do this like the good old wrap job like I did here until you know for a fact that it's going to work. But I've done this a lot over the years. So I'm, I'm pretty confident. This is the old wiring job I did. Like it's almost identical to the new one. So if I cut this and this. So um, I didn't have the illumination hooked up obviously, but if we compare, here is our 
uh, remote wire, there's our remote wire, there's our uh, e-brake wire, and there's our e-brake wire. Um, and then obviously this doesn't have a backup camera, but there we go, there's our backup camera power wire, virtually. So yeah, very cool. As you guys can see, this is my old, old setup. Um, I remember running these RCAs up in here and uh, thinking that, oh, we'll be able to play Xbox in here or PlayStation or, or whatever. Because um, those these RCAs run all the way down over here. And I've got these connections in here to where you can, uh, you could have uh, hooked, literally hooked up like an Xbox 360 or something. And we could have played Halo in the car. But um, we're going to pull these out. Like I'm not, I'm never going to use these. So everything else in here can go except for like the USB. Uh, the USB needs to stay. Um, I don't know if the new radio is technically USB 3.0. Um, it's 5 volt, 1.5 amp. So I'm thinking that it's not. So I'm thinking like I could probably just leave this in here because I mean it works fine. Uh, I'll do some testing of course beforehand. We still have auxiliary. I don't know if this has auxiliary or not. Uh, it's got a mic in so if the auxiliary exists it's probably in the harness that comes with it so anyway i'm going to pull all this old crap out and then we're going to move on there we go all right i do believe that i've got Ooh, you can see yourselves almost i do believe i've got the radio about as level as i can get it uh there's kind of a it was either a gap up top or a gap at the bottom i chose to have a gap at the bottom because once it's installed you'll never be able to see through there anyway so now i got to install the uh, the hazard button and a few other things i gotta clean the hazard button good lord and then i can hook everything up get everything installed run the wires and uh i'm not gonna bore you guys with all that you know you know talking through the whole thing i'm just gonna do it i got the mic installed it only took me like five minutes i just took the screws out of this and i ran it up through there because uh, I could have went up here like in front, but I, I had it like that, but I, I didn't really like it. So I just went up through this hole and it went, you know, between here. I didn't, I mean, I snugged this up pretty tight, but I'm, you know, I think the wire is going to be just fine. If not, you know, it's just a mic. I can always replace it and do it something different, but it came out over here and there's already these clips that have little troughs that you can put the wires in. And I got it back behind here and I just kind of flossed it back and forth and got it to come out down here. So I'm going to install that and yeah i'm really stoked about how clean that came out then we can take our color-coded connector here and we've got the flat on the top all the ridges on the bottom there we go all right so i've got everything set up exactly the way that i want it we should not have to pull the radio back out after this is all said and done fingers crossed i'm gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged in there we go, that's in. And freaking Sirius XM. There we go, moment of truth. Does it work? How about that? So obviously I'll, I'll go back and hide all these wires and things like that later on. So now if we do, if we do Bluetooth audio, RSX Bluetooth link, library, artists, we're gonna go to star set. We're gonna listen to divisions and let's listen to <laughs> all right i can't play that too long or you know copyright and stuff like that but heck yeah that's freaking awesome so it works so let's hook this up to apple carplay just pl all you gotta do is plug it in and it'll connect look at there apple carplay we got messages and pioneer maps music pandora obviously thumbprint radio very cool obviously i gotta mess with the eq and stuff but this thing looks freaking sweet So please look forward to uh, the, uh, the videos that I've got coming out after this one, guys, with the bike. I'm, bike content is officially back, as I stated in the previous video. And so um, I've got a couple more videos of the RSX coming up, I think. So 
Um, yeah, just just be looking forward to more RSX content and more CBR content, man. I'm I'm really glad to be back on the bike. It's starting to cool off a little bit, so definitely expect some more moto vlogs and riding. Assuming I've got all my audio issues worked out, but until we meet again, it's so nice to be back, you guys. I'll see you next time.